What if I told you that you're using DLSS wrong? It's a pretty bold claim, but let's face it, a lot of players aren't using DLSS. A lot of streamers, even in my community, I found that people just aren't using it. And a lot of that is due to the fact that they're already pushing their card utilization quite high. So even changing DLSS to quality mode really isn't giving them a huge jump in performance, but they don't like the blurriness that comes with DLSS. This is due to the native resolutions of 1440p and 1080p being upscaled from a lower resolution. So in 1440p, you're going upscaling from 960p when DLSS is enabled. Now, while this can be good for certain things with the anti-aliasing, the image might appear blurrier than normal. But what if there's a way to fix that? Now, there is another NVIDIA technology that came out at the start of the year called DLDSR, which is Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution. This allows you to pick two options above your native resolution to improve the visual quality of not only Tarkov, but any game. But when combined with DLSS, improves the game out of sight. It makes Tarkov look phenomenal. So here I am in a live raid on my SCAV. I've got about 130-ish, uh, 135 um, FPS. All I need to do with this feature enabled is go to my resolution, pick one of the two extras. In my case, it's 1920p. Go down to DLSS and enable quality, not change any of my other settings. Click save and that's it. We are now running Tarkov at 3400 by 1920 with DLSS on quality. My FPS has dropped down by about 15 and but I'm a more consistent FPS now, so it doesn't jump all over the place. But more specifically, the game now looks phenomenal. Grass detail around me looks sharp and clean. The distance in the telegraph poles are now visible and very easy to see. The telephone pole lines are now visible. I can even see the trees in further detail. Even piercing with the sun right above me, giving that hazy fog look, doesn't look as piercing in the eyes anymore, allowing me to see PMCs better. I can see detail significantly better across the horizon here, which means I'd be able to detect players better. This is the way that DLSS should be run in Escape from Tarkov with DLDSR. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to enable this feature in NVIDIA Control Panel as well as some recommended settings that you should be using. So let's dive into it guys and hope you enjoy the video. All right, so continuing on from the intro guys, I'm going to be probably breaking this video up into five key segments. The first one will be just what is DLDSR and how it functions with DLSS. And then the next one will be how to enable it via NVIDIA Control Panel. We'll be then talking about the basic settings that I use for good FPS in Escape from Tarkov via NVIDIA Control Panel. they will be very brief on this though. It might be just some screenshots and showing settings that you can copy. So pause at any time here. Then we'll be going in game to Escape from Tarkov and showing you the game settings being utilized. These will be broken up into two different categories that you need to be using. One will just be your standard settings and I'll have my recommendations for which settings are good for quality and FPS. But then there's the second um, setting that you will change, which will activate DLDSR with DLSS. Unique requires probably three changes in your settings in order to get the most benefit out of it. The last things we'll be talking about will be the advantages and disadvantages of using DLDSR with DLSS. So there, it's more of highlighting the disadvantages as well as maybe addressing some concerns while streaming this feature, um, there are some things that you need to probably be aware of. But anyway, guys, let's get started with what is DLDSR. Okay, so what is DLDSR? It stands for Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution. Now, Dynamic Super Resolution has been with us for quite some time with NVIDIA, but what's new is the deep learning part. This uses the tensor cores on RTX cards and allows you to run increased resolutions. Now, the basic premise of it is, is that it takes one pixel, super samples it up four times the resolution, grabs all the color averages uh, taken from those four extra points that are rendered, then downsizes it back or downscales it back to your native resolution, blending all the colors in to give you that increased fidelity. Now, I 
came across this with a tech quickie video from Linus quite a while ago in February this year when they were announcing and showcasing this technology. I tried it in Escape from Tarkov and yes I did notice you know, some visual improvements. Uh, shadows and a bunch of other things just weren't shimmering as much and it just looked like a crisper image and it looked phenomenal. The problem was is the FPS hit was also pretty savage. However with DLSS now and being able to be rendered and upscaled from a higher resolution thanks to DLDSR the benefit of running both technologies is phenomenal. DLSS will handle the anti-aliasing option. This is the reason why you don't see it as a option to select anymore once it's enabled. But that's a good thing because DLSS handles that a lot better. You'll see images clearer in the distance. Telephone poles and minor detail will be handled a lot better and a lot clearer. That means also PMCs will be rendering in more detail as well. And you'll be able to see players significantly better due to the increased resolution in now displaying on your screen. Now, this can vary depending on if you're a 1440p user or a 1080p user and also your hardware specs. But I highly recommend giving this a go because it will actually blow your mind at just how good Tarkov can look. So let's now look into how you can enable DLDSR in the control panel for NVIDIA. Okay, so in order to enable DLDSR, right click on the desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel. Once it's loaded, go to adjust image settings and then make sure it use advanced 3D settings as enabled. Go down to the next tab, which is manage 3D settings. Now in the global settings tab, not the program settings tab, scroll down until you see DSR factors. You should be able to click the drop down menu and you'll have two options with DL beside it. Reminder that this is only for RTX cards. The two resolutions I've got here are 1920 and 4K resolution. If you're a 1080p user, you'll see 1620 and 1440. Make sure you tick both of those, click OK. Once you've done that, the screen for the first time will go crazy for quite a while. Don't worry, it'll eventually normalize. Once it's gone, once it's settled down, go to DSR smoothness and then set, then just leave this at 33%. Now, if you find this image uh, to be too sharp in Escape from Tarkov, drop it down to say 50 or even 66%. The longer or the, the more that you move this bar, the more blurry the image gets. Even if you're a streamer, try it at 33% and just drop all sharpness. And I'll be recommending the same for even people who don't stream. It, it actually handles it quite well because of DLDSR's anti-aliasing method. So leave it at 33% and see how you like it, but increase it as you see fit. Once you've done that, you'll be then able to actually go into um, uh, escape from Tarkov and you're then going to have two options available. Once you go down to the settings and graphics, up on the top of your native resolution then you've got two others to select. Select the one that you want to use, go down to DL, DLSS, put it on quality, click save and then you're good to go. Okay so if you've got an RTX card uh, from NVIDIA, these are my recommended settings for escape from Tarkov. Head on over to the program settings tab that where we just were. Now you'll able to add escape from Tarkov via the um, button here and then browse for the executable. You're not looking for the BSG launcher or the BE for battle eye executable. Make sure it's the correct one. Add it in and now you can edit your settings. I'm going to fly through these pretty quickly without necessarily too much information as just a point of reference. Entropic filtering is application controlled as well as anti-aliasing mode. Gamma correction is turned off and anti-aliasing transparency is turned off. Um, when it comes to background application, max frame rate is off. The low latency mode is off. That is handled by NVIDIA Reflex now. You don't need to use that functionality anymore. Max frame rate is off. Uh, monitor technology is free sync or G-Sync depending on which one you have. Uh, Multi-frame sampled AA, I leave this one off. Big one is power management mode. Prefer maximum performance is ideal. This allows your NVIDIA card to use its maximum power limit, as well as relying on NVIDIA boost technology to keep your card cool or boost when it's cold enough. Let NVIDIA handle this, but give it its maximum power. Refresh rate is highest available. Now some of these settings here are some of the ones which can affect, uh, affect the visual quality of Escape from Tarkov. My recommenda recommendation here is for antistropic sampling optimization, leave this one on. The negative LED BIOS, leave this one allow. Texture quality, I would leave this one as high performance. 
However, if you do have an RTX uh, 3080 or better, you may be wanting to switch this over to quality mode as it will give you a little bit of a bump up in detail in the game and you've got the horsepower to support it. But if you're looking for max frames, high performance. Same with uh, tri uh, trilinear optimization, leave that one on. And then threaded optimization, I leave this one on um, because I've got a, a Ryzen uh, 5000 uh, 5900X, um, but this is personal preference. If you're not sure about this one, leave it as auto. If you've got a relatively modern CPU, leave this on. Um, triple buffering, turn that one off. Vertical sync, turn that off because you want uncapped frames and escape from Tarkov, so you gotta leave this one off. And virtual reality, uh, pre-rendered frames leave as one. These are the settings that I recommend guys. The big one just being the quality, uh, texture filtering quality setting here that you can change depending on if you want performance or more detail. But this should allow you to get pretty good FPS um, in Escape from Tarkov and it's settings that I've been pretty much chopping and changing and using for quite some time now. Alrighty guys, so now we're gonna jump into Escape from Tarkov graphics. We're gonna break this down into your overall native resolution settings that I would recommend you run. And then there's the DLDSR slash DLSS option that you can enable at your leisure and even during a raid. So first of all, stick with your native resolution for now, full screen mode. Um, you can run borderless, but there is an FPS hit. Texture mode, run this as high. If you've got a gig of VRAM or more, if you want more FPS, even on high end systems, run it as medium, but accept this, the texture quality reduction. Shutter quality, run this at low. I like seeing PMCs, I don't like them hiding. So this is again a personal preference one, but I find low to be the best here. LED quality, I run this at two. Some people run this higher because they don't like um, like wood planks and certain objects rendering in um, when they're right on top of them, or they just don't like the how often objects are rendering in. Increase this if you like, but however, acknowledge the fact that it is an FPS tax. Overall visibility, I run 400 purely for the fact that ballistic system change sniping in Escape from Tarkov where it's not as viable anymore. Pen drop off and flinch drop off has considerably reduced the amount of rounds that can penetrate over 300 meters now. So it's up to you on where you wanna go. In my opinion, I wouldn't go above a thousand if you don't like the mountains and stuff rendering in as much, um, or if you want maximum performance, drop this down to 400. Now, when it comes to anti-aliasing and antistropic filtering, I'm gonna touch on these both. Um, if you're running TAA, I would just run per texture. Now, if you're running TAA high, I would then change this to on for antistropic filtering. It's all, again, personal preference, but in my opinion, I prefer TAA and then antistropic filtering as per texture. I find this is sort of the best benefit of both worlds here um, and in terms of detail as well as performance. Resampling you leave off. NVIDIA DLSS, you can turn on quality. I wouldn't go anything below quality. You're not probably gonna see the, the benefit or performance increase of FPS, um, but the detail will drop significantly if you go under quality. Um, you can do this on your native resolution, and if you don't mind the blurriness that occurs from it, then all the best. Give it a go, get the increased performance, and call it a day. HBAO, I would leave this one on low if you can. It's obviously you don't need to, um, but it, I think it does help with grass shadows, weapon detail, and a few other things that just make Escape from Tarkov look that little bit better. And it really doesn't cost all that much to run on the low setting. Personal preference again, but give it a try and see if you like it. SSR is for reflections on water, um, especially when it's raining. But this is again, a personal preference. And low looks pretty bad in the water. However, low overall on landmass doesn't look too bad, but as you increase this, it will become increasingly, increasingly more taxing, especially once you go to high and ultra. So just be mindful of that. Personal preference, if you want max performance, keep it off. Antistropic filtering, we've already touched on. NVIDIA and reflex low latency, leave this one on and boost. Boost is just a maximum performance in NVIDIA control panel. That's up to you. I just keep it on and boost, even though I've got it on in the NVIDIA control panel. Sharpness is personal preference here. I prefer any 1.0 just because obviously um, painkillers will also add another level of sharpness as well. However, if you are running the DL, DLSS and DLDSR, change this down to 0.1. You only want a very minor amount of sharpness enabled purely for the saturation bug that exists in Escape from Tarkov right now after you've used painkillers if you turn this off completely but we wanna drop this all the way down if you use the DLDSR increased res 
because um, you already got a sharpen effect applied via NVIDIA. Lobby FPS and game FPS is always maxed out. Now, when it comes to the options down the bottom, the only two options that you probably need to worry about is grass shadows and MIP streaming. MIP streaming, if you're struggling on Lighthouse and you use high textures or even medium and you don't have much VRAM, this can help you quite considerably, um, especially if you're struggling to run maps like Lighthouse. Give MIP streaming a go. Obviously, there is going to be certain textures that look quite uh, blurry or whirly is the only other way I can describe it but that's because of MIP streaming. If you don't like that feature, then turn it off. Grass shadows, again, is a personal preference. I'm a streamer. I need my grass to look as good as possible. Having the shadows behind the grass makes it render in better, um, combined with HBAO on low. So that's just a little tip if you're a streamer, but it can make the game look, in my opinion, significantly better, especially on woods. The grass just seems to mush in together, especially if you've used painkillers. Grass shadows on and HBAO low seems to make a big difference. Um, grass shadows only renders out to about 20 or so meters anyway, so it's not as savage as it used to be. Obviously, high colored, um, high quality colors is something that some people use as well. I don't, I'm not a personal fan, and I find that it does drop performance, so it's the only reason I don't run it. Now, when it comes to DLDSR, all we've got to do is over to the resolution of our choice, and this can be in a RAID as well. Click on DLSS quality mode. And then once you've done that, that's pretty much it. The only thing I recommend doing is then dropping your sharpness down to 0.1 to avoid the saturation glitch. Click save and away you go. Enjoy experiencing Tarkov with the DLSS benefits as well as the increased fidelity that comes with DLDSR. Now, obviously, if you don't like it, you just turn it off and then go back to the edit version and click save and away you go. All your other settings will still be there. You don't need to change anything else and you get to have the option of which one you want to use. Alrighty, so the next thing I want to talk about is advantages and disadvantages. Sort of not in like, you know, one, like a, a tier list of advantages and disadvantages. We're going to just talk about them in general. Now, in my opinion, it makes the game look fantastic and sharper, and it's really hard to turn off once you have activated it. The other thing I like to say too is that my frames were very consistent when running this. Um, I don't know if everyone's going to get the same in this regards, but when I was running this technology, I was actually really surprised at how well it managed to keep my frames consistent. It wasn't jumping up all over the place. I would go from like 100 to like 150, whereas now I'm sitting at about like 100, 120, more around the 110, 120 mark quite consistently. The only issue I had was when I had picture and picture scopes. So that's the it's more specifically the one times mode within certain scopes. When you scope in the, the picture and picture just renders at a lower resolution. And I think DLSS struggles to handle this. Either it doesn't really accommodate the picture and picture resolution, or it actually is applying DLSS to this picture and picture picture in picture resolution and it's downscaling it to really low resolution um or sorry and it's upscaling it from a lower resolution i should say so that's the only thing i can think of in this regards i think it's there's something a bit iffy and it's not restricted to tackle this is a dlss issue i've even seen this sort of thing in crisis remastered and a few other titles especially with mates who have shown me um, crosses remastered and things like that on there. Other rigs with like uh, 3080 Ti's and stuff like that. I'm like, oh wow, the, the, you can tell as soon as you scope in, there's something just not right. And it's like distorted and, and it's got jaggedy edges. So it's something you need to be mind of when running these features. Also too, I just want to touch on that. Yes, you can stream with this. Um, increasing the resolution to the like 1920, etc. will still shrink it down to your normal native resolution. However, it will still count the game as running as 1920, which means that if you take screenshots, it'll screenshot at that resolution. Um, it won't apply some of the filters though, so just be mindful of that. But more specifically, if you're running a dual PC setup, the second PC with like capture cards and things like that may not agree with the resolution you're running and you may run into issues. The users that won't really have a problem streaming this will be single PC users because they're just capturing the screen and also people who are using NDI um, for dual PC setups, but it just depends on which way you want to go here. So you can try it. Um, I'd recommend probably running the um, sharpness factor instead of 33%. 
I did find that was actually still quite usable. And because of the DLSS um, anti-aliasing method used, it actually looks pretty good on stream. But if you're noticing it a bit too sharp, then I'd probably go down to like 50 or 66% and see how it goes and obviously adjust accordingly. But it's just something to be mindful of. Your mileage may vary and you may have to adjust your OBS screen resolution because obviously the game and your PC will change and have a few screen issues going on in the background while it's enabling, which could impact OBS. So you may have to adjust some screen resolutions, but it's very minor and it's easily overcome. So, but in saying that though, it doesn't stop you from just giving it a go without streaming anyway. And that's pretty much a wrap guys. That is my guide for DLSS used correctly in Escape from Tarkov combined with DLDSR. I really recommend you give this a try and let me know down in the comment section if you found it to be of any benefit. I would love to get your feedback on this functionality and this setup. Um, as always too guys, um, jump into any of my uh, socials down in commented down below. And more specifically, I do stream three nights a week on Twitch starting 8 p.m. Details will be on the screen in front of you now. I would love to have you guys swing by and say g'day. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you back out there.